Anita, tell Hi. us a little bit about this project on your property. Um, well, the project first started um, with uh, beekeeping. We have five acres up on Bickle Road. Um, it was farmed for many, many years and we um, took it back from the farmer. We decided that in the five acres we would plant pollinator plants for bees because we're beekeepers. Nice. So we planted, oh, 350-ish trees, bushes, um, perennials, all that are native to Ontario and that um, the bees need for the pollen. What the students are going to be doing is supporting the ecosystem okay with the native trees and the bees and that whole interconnection nice. right mm -hmm. yeah and this particular property it used to be farmed this um the section this five acres that we're standing on here which is right by the river um so candy road 10 and basically ganaraska river They, in this area, they prefer to have their toes wet. And at the other corner, closer to the river, it's more dry. So those trees prefer to have their toes dry. <laughs> and then you mentioned some other wildlife that the students might be interested in observing if they're Oh, quiet. absolutely. Absolutely. So the salmon are still spawning. So that they're really fun to watch. It's coming to an end, and I guess with a little bit of rain that we have, a lot of the, the carcasses are going to go back down the river. But we also have a family of eight bald eagles, and we only know that there's eight because we've seen them all at one time. Because when you see one, and you see it often, you don't know if it's the same one or if you've seen many. So. We have seen eight all at one time. Um, we have the blue herons, we have the cranes. Um, it is an amazing, amazing spot along the river. Where we're walking now, we have um, a swamp area. So trees don't grow here, bushes don't grow here. Really, it's just a lot of weeds. And then we have a grass that Pam really liked because it's a grass that filters and um so the water is also coming from this street so in the winter time you know who knows what they're spreading on there for ice and snow yeah yeah so she that, was yeah. worried that the water from the road would contaminate yeah. the river yeah. um but she loved the idea of these grasses and it's quite a distance to the river I haven't walked it out, so I don't know um, how far it is. But she was happy and felt good that there was no contaminants from the road going into the river. We had a huge problem with mosquitoes when we first moved here. And um, this is very swampy, but years and years ago, um, they rerouted the river and built a, a mill. So that old riverbed is still up here and uh. that's what's getting swampy. Uh. So we have made a path for the water rather than it being so flat that it was, you know, wet and swampy over say 10 feet. We narrowed it down to two feet. So the water follows that. So there's so much less mosquito problems now. Um, this is swampy as well, but because of the grass and everything, we don't really feel that it's as bad. Whereas on the other side of the berm or whatever you want to call it, mm -hmm. um, it was green algae. It was, oh, right. it was not yeah. good. Yeah. The other question I have is, um, uh, with this Great Lakes Local Action Grant, program that we're mm -hmm. using to plant the 900 trees in riparian zones. Um, we want the students to learn about invasive species. So okay. have you looked at any invasive species on your property and what you might be able to do to manage the invasive species like buckthorn or 
Well, it's funny that you would mention that because when we bought this property, our goal was to eliminate all of it. Oh, okay. And then we just realized how much of it there was. Right. And we have a lot of very old apple trees on the property. And um, it seems that the buckthorn is all growing underneath the apple trees. Like uh. there's babies, there's many different, you know, ages of buckthorn. It's almost as, the, as if the birds eat the berries, they sit do. in the apple tree, yeah. poop the seeds out, and then all of these little buckthorns grow. So the Ganaraska region is unique for what reason? Um, the Ganaraska River is extremely Sorry, River, yeah. shallow. And with it being shallow, you are not able to have a boat with a motor. Um, you can float on it with a canoe, a kayak, um, a floaty, like an inflatable tube kind of thing. Um, but in the summertime, the water level is so low that in the rapids, you would still have to get out and walk to deeper water. So because of it being so shallow, we, the homeowners that bank on to the river, actually own to the middle of the river. Oh. So for you to not be trespassing, you would have to float. So the water is public, but we own to the middle of the river and the neighbor owns to the middle of the river. So to so, walk in the river, you are trespassing. To walk in the river, but... Floating so is the, totally fine. You have to float. If yeah. you're not floating, you're trespassing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And so the this, river's changing all the time. It you know, is. Meandering. So that island there, which is quite large, um, we'll see it more when we walk around the corner. Hang this on, what about this island? So this island was never here before. So up where we were originally talking, where we saw the saw the blue heron right we we had um seven years ago we had about 10 feet more property there and it seems that mother nature has been cutting down like with the river the, yeah, yeah. the current yeah. of the river the ice in the winter time has cut away at that kind of jut out of our property and deposited it here <laughs> <laughs> So at least we don't feel like we're losing land. <laughs> right. That's, uh, yeah, it is something, the, the way that the and rivers And this, this is change. the spot where um, the bald eagles hang out. Ah, okay. So we cleared this. We didn't cut down any trees, but there, were, there was a lot of shrubbery, a lot of weeds and stuff. Oh, and here's, um, here's last year's salmon. Oh, yeah. The coyotes will bring them up onto shore and they go through phases like some years they only eat the heads off and leave the carcass oh. and other times they only eat the bellies and leave the heads. That's strange. It is. Oh. It's like they all get together and they figure out, okay, this is the year we're just going to eat the heads. Bizarre. It must have to do with um, like the environment. You know, you can, you can predict how severe a winter or a summer is going to be by what's happening prior to that. So it's almost like they know, do they need the head part or do they need the fatty belly part? Wow. Yeah, it's pretty cool. The natural dietitians. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> so before the bald eagles came, they've been here about four years, um, the turkey vultures is usually already quite noticeably fall weather in September and the turkey vultures go south. So we would have pitchforks all along here to put some of the salmon that the coyotes have brought up back into the water. Oh. Because the smell is unbearable. It's this here would be damaged from ice. That high up? Yep. Wow. Yeah, we figured there was a spring that float your fanny down the ganny, um, I think it's the third week of April, or the second, you Roughly, know, it, it might depends even on be the, the first week. Yeah, I think they move it depending on the, the fish growth. Um, but there is so much water. We have kayaks, so we float on kayaks. And it takes us approximately 45 to 50 minutes to get into town at the finish line. In the summertime, where the water is low and we have to walk through 
the, um, the shallow spots, the rapids, it can take us two and a half hours. Wow. Because of the walking. And the river is just going slow. So basically in April, um, during that event, we're just steering. Yeah. The water is doing all the work for us. Whereas in the summertime, we are paddling, um, not so much steering. <laughs> <laughs> when we first moved here, we noticed that there was a huge section of corn, stalks and all were missing, um, very close to the river. And um, that's where the trees are being planted, that area right there. Right. And um, it took us a while to figure out that there was a beaver living in the river who would come up and chop down like with his little teeth chew down um a corn stalk and drag it into something that looked very similar to this uh -huh. and he just slid down like you could see really? where he was sliding uh. it was super cool now what we've noticed since then the, the beaver has never been a problem here like where our property is we've heard of neighbors complaining about him and it could be that a river is wider here or just moving more quickly, I'm not really sure. But we will often have a fire at where we first were talking. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we'll be entertaining, having a good time. And the beaver doesn't even care that we're there. He's just a little man on a mission and he's uh -huh. swimming. It's, it's pretty cool. Yeah. But we have also, and beavers have a very identifiable trail in the snow so they drag their tail but their paws come beyond the tail ah. so you can see the paw prints and then where the bee where the tail has gone over it right, right. and the otters um well their tail is different but they slide yeah so every little hill you we couldn't figure it out last year was the first year that we saw it and it took us a while and dean figured out that where there was a hill there were no paw prints just a slide mark like a uh, belly right, right 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 it was super cool it's nice to know that we have those kinds of animals living so close and that we get to see them and enjoy yeah. them and it's interesting beavers can you know busy beaver yes and uh drag their tails yes yes <laughs> <laughs> we have an area coming up where obviously um, beavers had done some damage, but you can tell by the stumps that it was a very long time ago. Like there's a, a couple of them I can see here already. So the beavers, yeah. This is just a the little raccoons. trail to get to the field. 